Well, hello, and this is Rusty Glove Box here, and if this summer heat is driving you nuts trying to keep your classic hot rod or muscle car in a cooler operating range, maybe here's a few tips that'll give you some help. So uh, let's talk about them. You know, the first thing you need to check is your radiator. Make sure your radiator's in good condition. Uh, originally, this car came with a downflow. What I have done is uh, I put in a cross flow. The original radiator was only 26 inches wide and I believe from tank to tank it was like 21 inches tall. But what I've opted to do is put a cross flow in it. It is uh, 19 inches tall and it's 31 inches wide. So needless to say, you have to do a little alteration to get that to fit in there but uh, make sure you have enough radiator and it is in good condition for the type of engine you're running. The first two fans I'm going to talk about is the uh, clutch fan and the flex fan. Alright the clutch fan has that big aluminum hub in front of the fan and that is a thermostatic clutch and uh, that is controlled by engine speed and engine temperature and that's transmitted from the radiator as air passes by the uh, fan. Even when the fan is disengaged, it still spins at least 30% and uh, it operates off the engine speed and it's connected to the water pump shaft. Uh, sometimes this may cause a little extra wear to the water pump but a lot of your earlier vehicles and some pickups even today still use a uh, clutch type fan setup. And these are generally good on uh, mild modification on engines uh, and about 6,000 RPM. We'll talk about the flex fans a little bit. Generally they're a lighter weight fan so they put uh, less load I guess on your water pump shaft and uh, they're generally good up to 8,000 RPMs because they are a flex fan you need to periodically look at them and make sure you don't have any blade damage uh, you know everybody's big fear about some flex fans is a blade flying off uh, because it sits there and flexes back and forth but uh, it's a very versatile fan that's the fan, uh, seven blade, 18 inch. I think it's like 18 and a quarter is what I really use. And it moves a high enough volume of air under the hood that it helps keep uh, the engine heat that builds up in the engine compartment. It's able to give enough CFMs to make that flow out from under the hood. You know, mechanical fans, they work really good, but there's a few things that you need to take in consideration of them. You're going to need a fan shroud, and uh, you also need to position your fan blades correctly in the shroud. You don't want your fan blades sucked way up deep in there. Uh, every, all the literature tells you that you want like one inch to three quarters of an inch sticking out. Uh, and that's the best position in the uh, fan shroud. But to get maximum cooling, out of your radiator with a mechanical fan, you need to have a shroud and position your fan blades at the correct location. Electric fans. I have a small collection of electrical fans. I probably have about seven of them in all that I've tried over the years. And some applications they work, some of them they just don't work. One thing good about an electric fan you can put them in a number of different positions on your radiator uh, if you have a clearance problem. You know, if you're trying to use uh, your water pump to drive a mechanical fan, and if your radiator, for whatever reason, is not positioned correctly, that's going to be a problem. But an electric fan, if your radiator is shifted left or right or up and down, you're going to be able to position that uh, electric fan at almost any position and you're going to be able to put it uh, on the front side of the radiator or the back side of the radiator 
and uh, it's going to be very accommodating on the application that you're using it for. Here's a good example of a electric fan set up and uh, as you can see my water pump the shaft is right here so that would throw my fan blades way over here offset like that and uh, if I have my radiator in the center of the frame this electric fan I'm able to position it in the center of the radiator and uh, it worked out really good so you know you just kind of have to look and see what application works the best for you to me one of the negatives on uh, electric fans is they talk about parasitic draw on a mechanical fan on an electric fan you may need to upgrade your alternator because you're going to be drawing a lot more amps to keep that fan operating. You're going to need to possibly upgrade some relays and wiring or add more wiring. And uh, you just need to take all of that in consideration for your application. Uh, it's not that, to me, one fan is that much better over another. It's kind of what works for you the best. I just wanted to add a little bit more, you know, you need to kind of take consideration of what kind of vehicle your uh, cooling system is, is in. You know, if you have a car that was from the 60s, say mid-60s on up, and uh, especially a performance type muscle car, you know, the, the GM, the Ford, Mopar, all of that, well, you know, they they were set up, their cooling system design was, was set up and uh, they're going to have good airflow through the radiator and good airflow under the hood. You know, you don't want to build up a lot of back pressure behind the radiator because you can have as strong of a fan of any type that you can ever put up under there, but if the air has no place to go, it's just going to be batting the air. So. You know, if you have an earlier vehicle, uh, you know, that thing probably had a six cylinder or maybe even a four cylinder in it. And so you need to evaluate uh, your airflow under your hood. Do you need to add some vents somewhere under the, under the car in the wheel wells, something like that? Uh, do you need to put a scoop on it? You know, do you need to widen, uh, widen the area where the radiator fits to where it'll take in more air do you need to put a spoiler on the front and uh, so that's just some things you need to kind of take in consideration you know uh, it's not rocket science but uh, like all of us we like to drive our cars and just hope this little bit of information you know helps y'all on determining what type of system you need to use so, as always, I do appreciate y'all coming by the shop. This is Rusty Glovebox, and I'm out.